The horizontal time base can be varied from a slow speed setting of 0.5 seconds per division to a high speed setting of 0.1 microseconds per division. Additionally, a multiplication factor of 10 can be called into play when needed to further increase the sweep speed. Increasing the sweep speed allows for the display of high frequency signals, which is particularly useful in radio frequency measurements. As sweep speed increases, beam intensity diminishes. This is because of the time the beam has available to excite the phosphor on the screen. Some oscilloscopes automatically compensate for the reduced intensity by increasing the brightness of the trace when higher sweep rates are selected. As was the case with the vertical vernier attenuator, check, check, and check again that the horizontal calibrate control is in the cal position. By using the trigger level control in conjunction with the horizontal position control, you'll be able to carefully place the starting point of the trace at the point you need on the graticule of the oscilloscope. This is particularly important when making AC signal measurements. Additionally, you'll be able to use the oscilloscope's positive or negative slope select switch to determine whether or not you trigger on a leading or falling edge of a waveform. Selecting the proper trigger source is important. Generally, you will trigger on the same channel that you are measuring. Particularly when measuring complex signals, you might find using external trigger to provide a more stable display. External trigger is preferred particularly when viewing complex video or television signal waveforms. Always select line trigger when making measurements related to the AC power line or mains. This is particularly useful when checking ripple, for example, on an AC power supply. You must always use extreme care when connecting the oscilloscope to the AC power line as an extreme shock hazard is always present. In this section of DC voltage measurements, we'll concentrate on measuring the voltage of a simple penlight AA cell. You can use the techniques you'll learn here to measure just about any DC source, including a car battery or a DC power supply. Just in case you forgot, an alkaline AA cell has an open circuit terminal voltage of approximately 1.5 volts. Before we actually start taking any measurements, it's best to preset the oscilloscope controls as we'll see here. This is where it's important to have the oscilloscope operating manual handy. We'll begin by powering up the instrument. Begin by selecting channel A on the vertical mode switch of the instrument. You'll only need to use one channel for this measurement. Set the horizontal sweep rate control to 1 millisecond per division or 1 ms per division. Don't forget to turn the horizontal sweep rate variable vernier control to the calibrate position. Controls of this type usually have a detent at the cal position with an identifiable click sound when you reach this position. For now, you can't go wrong with setting the vertical position control to the approximate center position. Set the trigger source control to internal, and if your scope provides a choice, select channel A. For now, select positive trigger slope. Place the trigger level control in the center of its range. If your scope has a free run mode, enable it now. For DC measurements, this setting is not critical. Turn the intensity control clockwise until the trace appears. Keep the display brightness at the minimum necessary to prevent burning the phosphor on the screen. Adjust the focus control for the sharpest trace. Keeping the brightness control low will help in obtaining a sharp trace. Set the coupling switch to the DC or direct current position. Connect the test probe to the BNC input connector of channel A. If you use a scope probe, select the 1x option for now. You'll need to push and twist the BNC connector onto the front panel jack of the oscilloscope. This will ensure it is seated firmly and making good electrical contact. Set the ground reference trace to the exact center of the screen using the vertical position control. 
Verify that the vertical attenuator variable vernier control is in the calibrate position. Connect the test leads to the device under test, in this case the pen light battery. The red test lead is connected to the battery's positive terminal and the black test lead is connected to the battery's negative terminal. Note the noise that occurs from making poor connections. Now a solid connection to the battery has been made. Here we see the trace has deflected 1.5 divisions up from the center zero reference. Because each major division is 1 volt, the DC voltage is 1 volt per division multiplied by 1.5 divisions of deflection or 1.5 volts. We know that each division vertically is worth 1 volt because the vertical attenuator control is set to 1 volt per division. Let's take a look at the effect of the vertical attenuator variable vernier control for a moment. What we notice is the trace deflection decreases as the control is rotated counterclockwise. This occurs even though the battery voltage remains constant at 1.5 volts. This is why it's always important to keep the vertical attenuator variable vernier control in the calibrate position. You'll notice that serious measurement errors can occur if the vertical attenuator variable vernier control is in any position other than the calibrate position. For ordinary voltage measurements, the vertical attenuator variable vernier control should always be kept in the calibrate position. Only for special measurements such as measuring the phase of a waveform should the control ever be removed from the calibrate position. Let's change the vertical attenuator control to a lower setting for better resolution. It's just like switching to a lower range on a multimeter. But first, let's reset the ground reference trace to the lowest point on the graticule. To do this, select the ground option using the coupling switch. We'll use the vertical position control to set our new ground reference. Now the vertical deflection is 7.5 divisions from the ground reference trace. Counting the divisions is just like reading a ruler. Since each major division is 0.2 volts, the DC voltage is 0.2 volts per division multiplied by 7.5 divisions or 1.5 volts. Let's take a look at that again. Hit the channel A ground switch. Use the vertical position control to set your reference. Unground the channel A input and take your measurement. You can also short the test leads together. This accomplishes the same thing as selecting the zero or ground switch for the channel A vertical input. Personally, I'd rather hit the ground switch. Shorting the test leads together wastes time. Even if you decide to use the shorting method, you'll still need to use the vertical position controls to set the ground reference trace. The accuracy of your measurements depend heavily on your ability to carefully set the ground reference trace. Choosing the proper vertical attenuator setting is important. Selecting too low of a setting results in the trace deflection going beyond the measurement capabilities of the oscilloscope. This would be analogous to selecting a range for a VO 